All right, guys. Um, this video is going to be looking at the shoulder, so I want to thank Danny for being a model. Uh, some of you have been working with her. Uh, real quick, we're going to start with the bony landmarks. It's going to take a quick look at the model right here of the humerus, okay? So this is the anterior humerus. This is the head of the humerus. Here's the lesser tubercle. There is that intertubercle groove or the long head of biceps, tendon sits, and then this whole aspect right here. That's the greater tubercle. We talked about that in class. So this whole greater tubercle starts in the anterior, wraps all the way around lateral, and goes all the way to posterior. So if we were to place it up on Danny right here, you can see lesser tubercles right here, and that greater tubercle is going to take up most of her lateral form or lateral um, upper arm. All right. So we're just going to start with our basic palpations. I always like to start with what we know and can find easily. So let's just start with the jugular notch. Easy enough to find right here. All right, and from jugular notch, we can work our way out the clavicle. Again, very easy to palpate the clavicle. Come down, come down, and where the clavicle terminates, that's our acromion process right up here. It should be the tip of the shoulder. That's your acromion process attached to the scapula. All right, put a little pressure right there. That's your acromioclavicular joint. From here, I'm just going to drop straight off, and this whole area right there, that is my greater tubercle of the humerus. All right. So there's a chromium, drop down, greater tubercle of the humerus. Remember the picture in the book that has the hand that sits over the top with all the insertion points of the rotator cuff, so keep that picture in mind. Moving around into the front, right into the front, you can feel it. That's the long head of the biceps breakout. You might be actually able to even see it snapping. Matter of fact, I'm going to see if I can grab the phone here. Zoom in right here. Whoop. Hopefully it's hard to figure it out. Right there, and you actually see... When I get in there and I palpate it, you actually see the tendon snapping right there. See that tendon snapping? Once you find that long head of the biceps brachii, you know lesser tubercle is right next to it and greater tubercle is right next to it. So find that long head of the biceps brachii makes everything much easier. All right. So those are our main bony structures. Sternum, out to clavicle, to acromion, greater tubercle, long head of biceps brachii, lesser tubercle. The last bony landmark is that coracoid process. I'm going to ask Danny to sit right in front of the camera. It's anterior, even though it's on the scapula, it's still an anterior palpation. So we're going to start right here on the chromium. We're going to drop down and in and right underneath the, the clavicle. That should be the coracoid process. All right? The clavicle is right here. The chromium is right there. We drop right into this soft spot right there. There's the coracoid. Clavicle, chromium, coracoid, greater, lesser tubercle. All these little bony palpations. So be very uh, diligent and very efficient in your palpation. Very small amount of area. All right? So now we're back at the posterior side with Danny. We're going to still do the bony palpations. So we're going to stay on her left shoulder. Now we can come back to a chromium and then palpate the spine of the scapula all the way back where it terminates to the medial border. Or we can just chicken wing her and have the medial border pop out. Either way is fine. I don't care how you get there. So we're going to palpate the medial border. Right here, that's her inferior angle. Up top is her superior angle. Again, medial border. This will be her lateral border. If we can actually follow that all the way up, there's the infraglenoid tubercle way up high in the axilla. Axilla being the armpit area. We care about the infraglenoid tubercle because of the insertion of the long head of the triceps brachii. All right, so these are our bony landmarks. We're going to actually relax. Medial, inferior, lateral, superior. We filed the spine of the scapula again. If I kind of stop right here and I drop my fingers down, that's infraspinatus fossa. Spine of the scapula, roll my fingers up. That's supraspinatus fossa. And if I come chicken winger again and put my fingers up underneath, that's subscapular fossa. All right, so we got the anterior, we have our posterior our fossas, our different landmarks. So we're going to do the muscles, and I'm just going to go right in the order of the muscles that are in the textbook. All muscles are connecting bony landmarks, so if you feel comfortable with the bony landmarks, all you have to do is connect the, the muscles and that's it. So remember, for example, doing origin trace insertion for each of our muscles. So the first muscle is the deltoid, starting on clavicle, spinal scapula, coming down, tapers to the deltoid tuberosity. So just follow the nice tapering deltoid about a third or halfway down the deltoid. So this would be, or down the humerus, this would be deltoid muscle. Next, trapezius. We're going to ask Daniel to swim around posterior. 
Trapezius has three fibers. We already know the landmarks, so we're looking for the spine, which we can easily find. We're going to find the scapula, and we're going to find the nuchal line at the um, cranium. So upper trapezius comes right here. You can even grab it right there. That, that, let's see if I can get it in the camera. That bit right there, that's upper trapezius. Upper trapezius coming from the spine going out, that's middle trapezius. Here, coming down, that's lower trapezius. If you're going to palpate them all as a group, you can basically take them like that. This would be the whole trapezius muscle right here, a nice triangle-shaped muscle. With dismissed dorsi, you're going to stay posterior for dismissed dorsi. It's similar trapezius, but it's going to start a little bit lower down here in a fracolumbar fascia. I'm going to come up, big, broad origin. Now, this is the awkward one. It's going to pass through the axilla and insert into the lesser tubercle. I am going to actually grab the camera here so you can see where I'm going. So it's going to start broad origin here, come through, go through the axilla. So it's going to actually come, whoop, come through and insert right into this lesser tubercle on the anterior side. All right? That's the Tismus dorsi. Its neighbor or its little helper is Terry's major. Let's find that inferior angle of the scapula. I'm right here. Teres major comes through the axilla, inserts in the lesser tubercle. So tismus dorsi, teres major, they basically kind of, they don't join, but they run together through the axilla into lesser tubercle. So two for one deal with those muscles. Flipping through the book. Now we're going to talk about a rotator cuff. We're already looking at the posterior, so we'll stay in the posterior. Find the spine of the scapula. Drop down, infraspinatus. Starts here, inserts into greater tubercle. So this would be infraspinatus. Actually, I'm going to ask Danny to sort of sit back at that angle. Right there, perfect. So infraspinatus starts here and inserts into the greater tubercle. Spine to scapula, come on top. Supraspinatus. Here, don't worry about major or minor. You won't be able to differentiate them anyways. Spine, medial border scapula, connect them. So there's small little muscles. If I ever squeeze the shoulder blades together, there's rhomboids, okay? Again, anytime you want the muscle to pop out, just have them contract it, all right? You don't have to know the action, but it, it does help. So there are your rhomboids, major and minor. Levator scapulae, real easy. Superior angle, cervical spine, little muscle that runs right there. Now trapezius is over the top of it, so there's levator scapula running right there. So two really nice, easy, quick posterior musculature. I'm going to skip serratus anterior. I'm going to come back to this. We're going to go to pectoralis major right now. So I'll actually have to skip over around. Again, for females, just got to be respectful, understand. Um, working at the sternal body right here, and it's going to come straight across over the axilla and insert into the humerus. Pectoralis major does not touch the scapula. All right, so it starts right about here, comes across right over into humerus. That's pectoralis major. Pectoralis minor. Coracoid process, so again, clavicle, acromion, there's my coracoid, comes down at an angle, but the breast tissue basically covers the whole thing, so we're going to hover palpate this, so there's coracoid, and we're going to hover palpate it, because, well, yeah, so just on the exam, just make sure you do that, um, especially with the females. Uh, biceps brachii, two heads of the biceps brachii, coracoid, and the superior rim of the glenoid, to find that, acromion, Gray tubercle, so that little spot right in between them, you'll feel a little lip. That's the superior limit of glenoid. There's our coracoid. It comes down, forms the big muscle belly, and it inserts past the elbow. So look for the el relax your elbow. Look for the wow. Look for the elbow creases, just like we did at the knee. It's going to pass the cubital fossa. So look for the elbow creases because the biceps brachii starts up here comes down and cross the elbow. It's a two-joint muscle, kind of like our hamstrings are a two-joint muscle. Triceps brachii, same idea. Find your humerus, come down, and it inserts into the big, well, you can't even see that. Boop, there it is. Inserts down here into what we call the electronon process of the elbow. So from here, comes down. Kind of like with the adductors, we didn't care. They had this sort of broad origin. The only origin we really care about that we need to find is that infraglenoid tubercle for the long head. So long head comes down, molds with the other two heads. There they are, and they form the triceps brachii. And the final one, we're going to have a flip back around. Probably should have done this a little bit better, but that's the order of the textbook. And that's coracobrachialis. Anytime you see brachialis, think upper arm. So 
Biceps brachii, coracle brachialis, brachial artery, upper arm. So coracle brachialis, you set it, you palpate it. Coracoid process to the brachium. So right about here, there's a coracoid. So it's a little muscle basically running right about there. Biceps brachii is more here. Coracle brachialis is basically right there. So those are our, our main muscles. Now the last one is serratus anterior. This is the weird one. I'm going to ask Danny to sort of sit like this. You can only palpate it right here on the medial border of the scapula. So find the medial border of the scapula. It's going to dive underneath and insert right here into the ribs, that soft formation of the ribs. So on the exam, if you come here, underneath, into the medial border, that'll work just fine. Remember, you got some scapularis there also. So it's an odd palpation, but medial border comes down and inserts right here in the ribs in a sort of serrated area. All right, so that should be basically the main bony structures, muscles, etc. I want to thank Danny for being a model, coming in on a Monday to do this. Uh, we're going to be talking more about the insertions when we come to the elbow, and we'll try to do another one of these videos for elbow, and definitely one for the hand and forearm, because that's, that's a little confusing. A little, a little confusing. <laughs> so uh, we'll see you on uh, Wednesday or Friday, and uh, we'll talk to you then.